making plans for Nigel. This boy is electric. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the EV Puzzle. Uh, something odd is going on, isn't it? It's not as it should be in April. April has generated more solar energy than not just any other April, but any other month that we've had solar panels. Well, apart from one, May 2020 was the only month we've had any May, June, July, August that's been better than this April, April 2025. And yeah, there'll be people saying, oh, it must be global warming, must be this, must be that. But you know, whatever it is, it is exceptional. And it's been a it's been a weird month overall. You know, I can recall that last year, 2024, was generally dull and there were some really bad months and where it was record lows. And 2024 just wasn't very good. But 2025, January was bleh, a bit nothing. February was extremely dull and carried on from 2024, thinking not a lot of solar. But March, March was really sunny, very, very bright, broke some records, uh, didn't have a lot of rain and just very sunny. April has continued. It's been exceptionally sunny, hardly any rain. I think we had one day where it rained. And yeah, the, the garden is not looking like normal for April. It's not as green and lush as it should be. Um, we seem to be a month ahead. It's almost like March was April and April was May. The The numbers just look a little too good. <laughs> too big uh so yeah solar wise it's been absolutely fantastic uh, let me know in the comments how you've been getting on uh, i presume if you're in the uk you've had similar sort of weather to ourselves and you've probably broken some solar records as well it's yeah i don't know whether it's just great or odd or concerning um we probably haven't had a drought and it's when these exceptions happen, they, they make me think about things and they make me think about, uh, well, we haven't really had a uh, hosepipe ban for quite a few years. We haven't had a proper drought where we've struggled to have enough fresh water for everything and everyone. So is this going to be the year? Because if this continues, if we have as much sunshine as we have in March and April, how many more months will it take before we have a serious problem and crops aren't going to grow as well as they should. Uh, the farmers are all planted potatoes around here and they need a lot of water. Um, so they're going to have to extract it. They're not going to be able to rely on just the good normal weather. Anyway, so it seems it's a little bit duller outside today than it has been uh, of late. So maybe the weather will change. Maybe it's just been a brilliant March and a brilliant April. Maybe May is going to be a bit normal and we're going to have some more rain. Anyway, uh, enough of the introduction. Let's get on with the stats and let you know how we got on and uh, share all that wonderful information with you. There's a few good observations along the way as well. A few things that uh, stand out, I think. But before we start, one of the things to talk about, um, I changed my strategy in April. If you remember from last month's video, in March, I was exporting as much as I could. I was even exporting from the battery overnight, exporting as much as possible. We ended up exporting more than we generated in solar uh, power. So I think it was 1.3 megawatt hours we exported and 1.3 something megawatt hours we uh, generated from solar as well last month. This month, April, I've changed the strategy. I haven't exported from the battery and I haven't been as bothered about how we consume energy either, trying to export as much as possible. I've just been consuming energy from the sun, charging our batteries, heating our hot water, doing those things during the day and not trying to export more. I haven't made any efforts, haven't turned that battery export on. So it'd be interesting to see what the difference between March and April is and how much difference it's really made to me when I've been pushing the export and when I haven't been. OK, here we go. Over to the stats for the month of April 2025. Solar production for the month, 1,499 kilowatt hours. Yep, just such a shame that one of them didn't round up to one more kilowatt hour. Comparing to previous months, you can really see here on this chart that on the right hand side, this month's data at 1,499, it is much more than we've generated any other month. But on a like for like basis, if you look at just say the green line, we've only just crept above 1,200. That's only been beaten on one other month, June 2022. 
And the breakdown of that solar generation, our first and main solar array, 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels on a 3.6 kilowatt inverter generated 624 kilowatt hours with a peak day of 26.6 kilowatt hours on the 18th. Again, no other month, including May, June, July, August, etc., has been better than that, except May 2020, when we generated 668.7 kilowatt hours, so an even bigger exception on that month. Next up, our garage solar panels, just three panels, 1.1 kilowatts, and our east-facing gable panels, four panels there, totaling 1.8 kilowatts. Those together are connected to a 2.5 kilowatt solar inverter and generated 240 kilowatt hours. And our most recent solar install, 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels ground mounted in the garden, they generated 278 kilowatt hours with a peak day of 12.2 kilowatt hours. And that just leaves our solar edge inverter, 2 kilowatt inverter, 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels generated 357 kilowatt hours. Comparing to previous Aprils, yes, they are higher than any other April, but just look at 2024, how low that was. Uh, our 3.9 kilowatt array, 420 kilowatt hours, and we generated 624 kilowatt hours this April. It really is a significant April. Total for the year so far, 3.547 megawatt hours. And the stats for the number of kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed for each array. We had 160 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels in April for the main array. Just half that amount, 82.76, that's for the garage and gable solar panels. The solar edge inverter with 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, 148.75, which is very good. They're south-facing, uninterrupted. And that comparison to the garden panels, which has some shade in the afternoon from about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon onwards, 115.83 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed. And I do like that comparison between the Garden 2.4 kilowatt array and the Solar Edge 2.4 kilowatt array. You can really see the difference there that shade makes. I've got uh, shade on the garden panels. So observation time, the gable solar panels that we have, so the four panels, they're completely 90 degrees flat on the wall facing east. What's interesting is because the sun is rising further and further to the east, then those solar panels have gradually been getting better and better every morning. The sun's rising higher in the east, so we're getting more solar generation first thing in the morning from those gable panels. But obviously in the winter time and at different times of year when the sun isn't in that very east position, those panels aren't going to generate as much. Another observation this month is our garden solar panels. This is the blue line on this chart. Uh, we've got 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, yet we have been peaking at 2.9 kilowatts of generation at times. We've oversized the inverter. It's a 3.6 kilowatt inverter, so it does provide as much as the solar panels can possibly generate. So it's been nice to see the garden solar panels generating really well. The angle on them must be perfect right now. April has also seen the highest ever peak solar generation that I've ever seen. So the instantaneous peak, I've seen a high of 10.4 kilowatts. I really thought our system was only capable of 9.6, 9.7 as an absolute maximum. So it's been amazing to see that we've gone over 10 kilowatts at this time of year. So again, the angles must be really, really good. Another observation, but this time not solar related, but grid voltage. I've noticed a change around the 9th of April. When we're exporting about 8 kilowatts, sometimes the AC voltage that we see can be quite high. So high, in fact, it's above what the uh, limit should be on the grid. So this is the grid visible from inside the house. And we're seeing 260 plus volts, which is really, really high. And it concerned me so much on one occasion, I actually called the DNO UK Power Networks and get them to check it. They confirmed it was within limits, but it was very high. So unless I'm imagining it from the 9th of April, it looks like somebody's tapped the transformers down a bit and the voltages have reduced, which is great news because I'm not near the limits of what our solar inverters can handle. Because if we go over, I think, 263 volts, my solar inverters shut down. 
So with so much solar energy, you'd think we wouldn't be importing anything from the grid and would have a zero bill. Well, in fact, we're still importing from the grid because it's cheaper to do so. We're paid more to export our energy than we are to import it. So I'm still charging our electric cars overnight on the Octopus Intelligent Tariff at 7 pence a kilowatt hour. We're still charging the home storage battery. We're still heating hot water. And yes, we've had the heating on as well. So we have been using kilowatt hours from the grid from midnight until 5.30 in the morning. And we've consumed 358.57 kilowatt hours. As I said at the start of this video, the comparison to March is interesting. March, we imported 615 kilowatt hours. So because I'm using less energy from the grid and more energy from solar, I'm actually consuming more of it. We've only imported 358 kilowatt hours. So here's one to get your head around. In April, we've exported just 1.216 megawatt hours compared to March, which was 1.3. And as I said at the beginning of the video, that's because in March we were exporting from the battery. In April, I changed my strategy and we haven't been exporting overnight from the battery. Money-wise then, in April, we spent £25 on energy coming from the grid. Compared to March, when we were bringing more in, we spent £43. But the export is different again. £200 credit for export in March because we exported 1.3 megawatt hours. And in April, we only exported 1.2 megawatt hours and we got a credit of £182. Now, to my great surprise, 182 minus 25 is exactly the same as 200 minus 43. £157 net credit in both months. So with so much solar and longer solar days and not having a strategy of exporting from the battery, our battery usage has been lower than normal. Just on two days in April, I charged to 100%. Other than that, there's been a little bit of charging here and there from the grid or from solar, and I've not really been worrying about it. And the battery has stayed between 60 and 80%. There's been a slight issue, just a really small issue on cell balancing with our home storage battery, the Pylon Tech batteries. Because I haven't been charging to 100% every night, it hasn't been balancing the cells. So I have noticed a larger than normal difference between the minimum cell voltage and the maximum cell voltage. And when I charged them back up one day uh, during the day on solar, I did notice that it took longer to balance the cells at the end. It took quite a while for it to get from 96% to 100%. My energy stats for the month were 60.6 kilowatt hours went through the eddy to our Mixergy hot water tank, 190.1 kilowatt hours charging our two electric cars on the Zappi, and 410.8 kilowatt hours for house consumption. So on the subject of hot water, those 60.6 kilowatt hours included three occasions where we heated the hot water tank up to 100% capacity of hot water. Did that not just for the Legionella cleanser, that was on one occasion, but a couple of times just because I fancy doing it to heat the hot water from solar and get it up to 100%. Something to watch out for next month is that I am changing how I heat our hot water. At the moment, I heat it using the My Energy Eddy device and I automate it using Home Assistant, and that's what keeps it so efficient. This month going forwards in May, I'm going to use Mixergy and its own smart scheduling to see if it can do it any better than I do. And lastly, the individual device consumption, starting from the top, the highest usage, the Zappi, uh, charging our electric cars from the grid, 183 kilowatt hours. Toshiba Air Conditioning is the second highest, that's our heating, 93 kilowatt hours, just 93 to heat the house. The Eddy from the grid, 59 kilowatt hours, that's heating hot water, the Mixergy hot water tank. Interestingly, the Eddy Solar was 28 kilowatt hours, so that shows that we are using more solar to heat the hot water. Kitchen sockets, 49 kilowatt hours. Cloakroom radiator, just one radiator in the cloakroom. That's the one we keep the warmest, 30.9 kilowatt hours. The TV was 18 kilowatt hours. Quite a lot. We watch TV a lot. Mixer G heating, so that's when I boosted it to 100%, 15.8 kilowatt hours. The ensuite radiator next, that's 14.6 kilowatt hours. The main induction hob, just two hob rings, but it's an induction hob that we do most of the cooking on, 14.27 kilowatt hours. The internet hubs, that's all of the hubs we have, 13.2 kilowatt hours. The Zappi from solar, yes, a little bit of Zappi on solar, 6 kilowatt hours. A guest room radiator, 4.7. And the lawnmower, yes, the Yucca lawnmower is out and just 1 kilowatt hours usage for April. 
As always, thank you so much for watching these videos. I hope you enjoyed this one with all the great content there and all the great data. Let me know in the comments how you got on solar and consumption wise and what your plan and strategy is. What are you up to with uh, using less energy and generating more energy? How does it feel to you? I think we're on to a really good thing here. And I am starting to think that it's not always going to be the same. I wonder if at some point there'll be more of a ban on solar. So, so many people will realize how good it is, will have had enough. I'm not sure if the grid really wants our solar energy. I'm not sure if they want to embrace customers with their own micro generation or whether that's just a thing they allow and get on with it, sort of thing. But if they were to start restricting it, then it'll make you think those people that have already done it and already installed, like ourselves, are the lucky ones. Uh, I'm not so sure that everyone's going to be allowed to do this going forward. I'm not sure if it's going to be a free for all going forwards. So on that bombshell of my thoughts about the all the fun might not be available for everyone in the future. Take care. See you again soon for more energy related videos. Keep generating, keep using less energy, keep being efficient. It's great fun, isn't it? Having no energy bills at all. Take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.